Hey friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress, and today I'm gonna to show you how I refinished my grandparents' deck. Weekend Warriors, this is a great project for you, obviously weather permitting, because this project took me a few days to complete. I'm really excited to show you this transformation as well as my grandparents' reaction, so let's get started. So my grandparents have a deck in their backyard that isn't in the worst shape in the world, but definitely has not seen some love in a while. So I partnered up with my friends at the Home Depot to give them a cool outdoor space to hang in during this stay at home period. Now my grandparents are pretty rad and they gave me full creative freedom on this deck. So I basically kicked them out of the backyard for a few days and got started on a long weekend. Okay, this is adorable. I just asked my grandpa if he had a radio so I could listen to music while working and this is what he gave me. Amazing. Grandparents are the best. Now, before I could get started doing any work on the deck, the first thing that I had to do was remove all of the patio furniture and anything that was on the deck. At this point, the fun part is that my grandparents don't know that I will be surprising them with a brand new patio set at the end of this project. They just think all of their patio furniture is coming back on the deck once it's finished. So this was really fun for me because I was super excited about starting fresh and giving them a brand new space to hang out in. But once everything was cleared off of the deck, it was time to inspect all of the boards. And luckily there were no boards that really needed to be removed or replaced, but there were a couple of nail heads that were sticking up and I just banged them back into place using a hammer. And since this deck has not been refinished in a while, there wasn't any paint or pre-existing stain that really needed to be sanded off. So I just gave the deck a really nice sweeping before I began the deep cleaning process. Now there are tons of ways to clean and prep a deck for stain, but for me, I actually decided to go with a deck cleaner from Olympic for this project. And one of the things that deck cleaner recommended I do was soak all of the plants around the deck with water before beginning the cleaning process. And this will just help to neutralize any cleaning solution that happens to get on the plants once I spray it on the deck. Now, the reason that I opted for a deck cleaner here is because this deck has seen a lot of love over the past couple of years. There is moss and grossness on it and I just wanted to start with a clean slate. So I used this deck cleaner. I did not dilute it. I just placed it in a handheld sprayer and then I applied it directly to the dry deck and allowed it to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before washing it away. The second thing I learned was definitely to never wear any clothing or shoes that I care about when cleaning a deck ever again because it definitely stained my clothing. Also, this product does have a little bit of an odor, so if you're working on a day where there isn't a breeze, you may want to wear a mask or a respirator, especially if you are sensitive to smells. Other than that, everything else was pretty breezy. I applied the product, I then scrubbed it in slightly with a brush to make sure that it hit every surface of the wood, and then I allowed it to sit for those 10 to 15 minutes before coming back to the deck with a pressure washer on the lowest setting and then washing all of the boards off. So the reason that I wanted to use the pressure washer on the lowest setting when cleaning the deck was because if I used it on a high setting, it could damage the wood beyond repair. And by using it on the lower setting, I did get a couple of little splinters or some fuzziness here and there, but it's nothing that can't be fixed using a handheld sander, which you'll see me use in a little bit. In fact, cleaning the deck this way was probably the gentlest way to go. And I'm so happy that I did that. But like I mentioned, after letting the deck dry for a minimum of 24 hours, I then came back the next day and began to just knock down any of that fuzziness using a handheld pole sander. I probably could have used a random orbit sander or some sort of electric sander, but honestly, the deck really wasn't in that terrible of shape and I just didn't want to be too aggressive. So I just took the extra time to be gentle and use the pole sander and it really honestly worked out just fine. And I was obviously pretty stoked with how the deck was looking at this point in the project. Also grandpa's old radio for the win because sometimes the best way to beat the heat is to keep yourself thoroughly entertained. And that is exactly what I did throughout this entire project. If there's one thing that you need for a project like this, sunscreen. <laughs> Not today, Mr. Sun. 
So because I started the washing portion of this project super early in the morning the day before, I was able to give the deck a full 24 hours to dry as per the recommendations on the deck cleaner bottle which meant that the next day I could come back and start the painting process. And of course the weather said it was going to be cloudy, but it ended up being super sunny and extremely hot. And I probably could not have picked a hotter day and or time of day to do this part of the project. I'm honestly such a baby about the heat. The summer is really, really tough for me. But anyway, enough complaining. I got started by covering any surface of the house or the fence or the plants that I didn't want to get covered in paint before I started doing anything. And once all of my surfaces were prepped, it was then time to begin the staining process. Now, because this is an older deck, I opted for Olympic Elite Solid Stain for this deck. And this is going to help seal everything and give it a really rich color, but still bring out some of that beautiful texture in the wood. And since I had to use a combination of the three gallon bucket as well as a one gallon bucket, I just made sure to pour it all into one giant bucket and mix it all together for consistent coloring. Now, in terms of applying the stain, there are a couple of different ways that this can be done. And I'm gonna walk you through all of them pretty much because I tried almost every single method for this project. The first being that I did use a sprayer to spray the stain onto the lattice because I wanted consistent and even coverage. And then I took a brush and just back brushed the stain so that it was all nice and neat and there were no drips. In all honesty, if you can get your hands on a sprayer for a decking project, seriously do it. It made spraying the lattice and the railings on this deck so easy. But let's talk some other methods for those of you who don't have a sprayer at home. Another way to stain the deck is by using a roller and then using a brush to back brush the stain into any of the grooves that the roller can't hit. Now this is effective, but it definitely took a long time. And after a while, I then switched to a deck staining pad, which definitely went on a little more consistently, but again, it took a long time to do. So long story short, I then eventually switched back to the sprayer, which was a total lifesaver because it was able to get into all of the grooves and the nooks and crannies on these boards. And that ended up being my preferred method for applying the stain to the deck for the rest of the project. I actually ended up using this method for both of the recommended coats of stain for this project. And I also made sure to still use the paintbrush to back brush all of the color into the grooves and make everything look just a little more natural. Now, the cool part about this product is that it is a stain and sealant all in one. So it only required two coats and I was able to apply the second coat after the first coat dried for two hours, which allowed for plenty of time for snack breaks. Now at some point my paranoia got the best of me and before leaving the deck alone for two days to dry, I actually decided to take the plastic wrap off of the house and the fence and the plants because I was nervous that it was going to land in the decking paint and then ruin the finish. So I just did this, touched up any spots that I may have messed up with my shoes and then allowed the deck to dry for two full days. So a couple days later, I brought my brother with me to move in the brand new patio set that I was surprising my grandparents with. And basically my goal was to just give them some outdoor living space to hang out in while they are stuck at home. So I gave them a small seating area by their back door and then also gave them a little bistro set so they could have their breakfast or their coffee on the deck as well. I also made sure to choose furniture that was outdoor specific and super low maintenance because I don't want them to feel like they have to clean the furniture every single time they use it. At this point, I was super excited with how this deck was turning out and I could not wait to surprise my grandparents with their new transformed backyard. Luckily, they were super distracted by their breakfast, but once I called them outside to check out what I had done, they were so excited and the reaction was like literally priceless. Hey yeah. Wow, I don't believe it. Oh my God. Oh my this God. Is like Paradise Island. Oh my my. Is this gonna stay? Is this gonna stay? Yeah, this is all yours. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh my, my God. goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Is thank this, you so is much. Is this waterproof? Thank you, sweetheart. Thank it's, you a thousand times. Thank you. Now, can I sit down? Go sit. Go sit. Enjoy. Oh. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. 
Before tackling this decking project, I was super intimidated by refinishing a deck and luckily this deck wasn't in the worst shape. I do know that there are decks out there that need a lot more work, but all of the work that I did put into this one was so worth it after seeing my grandparents' reaction. I am so excited that I was able to give them a space that they are going to fully love and enjoy, especially while being stuck at home right now. And I can't wait to be able to fully enjoy this deck with them sometime, hopefully soon. I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and this project and that it made the idea of tackling a decking project a little more approachable for those of you who have been thinking about it. In the meantime, and as always, thank you all so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects like this one in the near future. And until next time, friends, happy DIYing.